we all love a good extreme grocery budget challenge. So I figured, all right, let's go back to the basics and see if we can do a $35 challenge. And is it still possible in today's world? And hey, let's put an extra twist on it, make it even more difficult. Let's make it fall themed. I'm a sucker for fall food as much as the next guy. So this whole grocery budget challenge is a fall themed one. You're gonna find very warming meals and things that we love and hopefully you do too. Now I like to do a challenge like this to save money and see really how thrifty we can be. But if you are truly struggling to feed your family, make sure that you reach out to your local church or food banks to help you out. There is no shame in getting help when you need it. So it shows that it still can be done at 35, 66. We've got about 75 fall meals here. Now I just wanna interject here. We ended up getting 65 meals. Two of the meals that I thought would be enough to roll over just really weren't. And I just wanna be honest with you about how much food is in this meal plan. So we ended up with about 65 meals and two days, you know, you're gonna to have to grab something else for lunch basically. But everything else is gonna be enough for leftovers and plenty of delicious food. We're gonna make some chili and some butternut squash mac and cheese. So I got some red kidney beans, stewed tomatoes, tomato sauce, mixed vegetables, because we were still able to get these chicken quarters. These are like seven something I'm gonna put up on the screen and 10 pounds of them. So we're gonna cook up a bunch of them. We're even gonna make some bone broth. We're gonna make a like chicken pot pie type thing with this Jiffy baking mix. This actually ended up being cheaper than the Walmart brand. So grab that, we have like a ton of it. So we'll use that for like chicken pot pie casserole. We're gonna make a pumpkin soup. With that, we're gonna have some biscuits. We're gonna do some chicken on a sheet pan with sweet potato and carrots. We've got turkey, this is for the chili. Cheese for our mac and cheese. Carrots and celery for a chicken noodle soup because we're gonna have plenty of chicken. We're gonna make up a soup with our elbows. So we use half the package for mac and cheese, half the package for chicken noodle soup. Again, we can have some biscuits with that. And then with part of the pumpkin puree, because we're gonna do pumpkin soup, we're also gonna do some pumpkin pancakes with the Jiffy baking mix. Eggs are also gonna be um, just part of our breakfast routine. So it'd be like breakfast, which is pumpkin pancakes and eggs. And eggs will help us make some of the uh, stuff with the Jiffy mix if we need to. Milk, that's gonna help make our our pot pie, our mac and cheese, our biscuits, lots of goodies. And I just want to know, I will be using some basic pantry spices and items during this challenge. I will list all those and the recipes in the blog below. All right, we have to get started by making chicken broth. This is maybe the most boring and not fun part, but it's really gonna get everything started so that we have a base for some soup and um, some flavoring for chicken pot pie. You wanna start with one onion and we're just gonna kinda of quarter that up. We also need one diced piece of carrot and one diced piece of celery. And then in a large stock pot, pour enough water to co cover just barely four of those chicken thighs. And then put that stock pot on the oven over medium high heat and bring it up to a boil. And then you're gonna add in the carrot, onion, celery, and about a tablespoon of salt. And then if you had fresh herbs on hand, you could put them in like a little satchel, some parsley stems, thyme, garlic, bay leaf, peppercorns, kind of any of those items would taste really good in this. But because I don't have those fresh items on hand, I'm just gonna use some dried parsley and dried thyme. And you just wanna turn the heat down and simmer this for an hour up to five hours. I think I did a couple of hours on this. And you just wanna make sure that your chicken is all the way cooked through. And then you kind of can skim off any of the yucky stuff on the top. You'll notice that there kind of is some whenever you make broth. And then remove the pieces of chicken. We're gonna use this for soup and chicken pot pie. And then you can just pour all of the broth through a strainer into a container. And I like to put mine in the refrigerator overnight. And then afterwards, there's gonna be basically like fat on the top. And you can actually pull those pieces of fat off because they're cold and congealed now uh, versus trying to kind of skim the fat off the top while it's still hot. And now that that broth is taken care of, it's time to make biscuits. These are gonna be great to go with two soups that we're having this week. These are seriously so easy to make. I just made double the recipe on the back of the package. You just mix together Jiffy baking mix and milk and you have your drop biscuits. You could also roll these out and make like the circle ones if you want, but I love the drop ones. So I just kind of make them into like a little ball on a spoon 
put them on my sheet pan and cook them in the oven according to package instructions. I don't know, these just remind me of my childhood and they're the perfect addition to a nice brothy soup. And speaking of soup that goes very well with these delicious biscuits, we have pumpkin soup as the first meal. You wanna start by dicing one half of one of our onions. Then you wanna heat about three tablespoons of butter in a large pot and add in those onions. If you don't have butter, that's totally fine. You could use like oil or olive oil, anything that you have that's a fat. Give that a good stir and cook those down for a little bit. And then you're gonna add in about a tablespoon sprinkle of the, bis the baking mix. And and the reason for this is we're gonna kind of create a roux to make it a little bit thicker. If we had heavy cream, we wouldn't need to do this. So I'm just doing this as kind of a thickening agent because we're gonna be using milk instead of cream in this dish. Then we're gonna put in some spices. If you have fresh garlic, you can use that, but I'm using a teaspoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of light brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So I'm going to make sure that all of that is mixed together and kind of coats those onions. Then we're going to add in one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree. So I have my really large can, so I'm just using about half of that. And then I'm just adding in three cups of water. You could definitely use the chicken broth or if you had vegetable broth or something like that here. I didn't find that it was super necessary to use it in this soup uh, and I wanted to save it for some other things. So I decided just to use the water and that was just fine. You also wanna add in a teaspoon of salt and then bring it up to a boil and then reduce the heat to low and simmer for 20 minutes. Then you wanna slowly stir in a half a cup of milk, then let the soup cool for a few minutes and remove it from the heat. And then you can either transfer the soup to a blender or you can use an immersion blender, which is what I have, and you can puree that until smooth. So basically wanna make sure that all of those onions and everything gets pureed right into the soup. So whatever way you wanna do that, you could use like a Nutribullet, you could use a full-on blender, you could even use a food processor, or like I'm using an immersion blender, which I absolutely love. And I do have one down in my Amazon store in the description box if you're interested in getting one. This is amazing for soups. And that is it. This is about five servings. So this is the perfect for one night for my family. So not like a multiple day meal, um, but so belly warming and so delicious with those biscuits. Next up, we're making pumpkin pancakes, which is our breakfast recipe for the week. I'm doubling this recipe. So we're using four cups of the baking mix, four teaspoons of baking powder, four teaspoons of sugar, and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. And if you don't have pumpkin pie seasoning, I think it's really just a mix of uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. And I will make sure to put a recipe for that down in the description box for you. Having a solid spice cabinet is really what helps make these challenges happen. So I always recommend buying at least one spice at the store uh, each week if you're trying to ramp that up. Then you wanna add four tablespoons of melted butter, one and a half cups of milk, and four eggs. Then you wanna stir that until most of the lumps come out. And then we're just gonna make pancakes the regular old way that you love to make pancakes. I like to use butter as my fat for them. And I, if I had a griddle, I would love to use that. I, for some reason, don't have one. So I just uh, torture myself by cooking them in a regular pan. But you know what? Use what you have. It's gonna work. It's gonna be fine. And these turned out absolutely amazing. I always say when you're cooking pancakes, you kind of want to wait for those little tunnels to show up before you flip them. And that's what's gonna help give them height. I did uh, serve mine with some butter and maple syrup, but if you don't have maple syrup, they're just fine on their own as they are. They're full of flavor and absolutely delicious. If you have sugar on hand, you can always kind of make like a little simple syrup to put on top of it. Uh, and that's great too. For this next one, we're making roasted chicken legs with carrots and sweet potatoes. This is definitely a fall favorite of mine, and you've probably seen it in a few videos before. And you know what? I'm just going to show it again because it's so fabulous. It tastes like something you would get at a restaurant, uh, but it's so inexpensive and delicious. So I'm just peeling up and then chopping up two carrots, and then I'm also going to peel up and chop up my sweet potato. And then put all that in one bowl and toss with a tablespoon of olive oil, a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, about a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of dried parsley, a teaspoon of dried thyme, and a teaspoon of dried sage. 
Now I do cook for my family all the time, um, but you can see that I still do things in weird orders sometimes. Why? I'm not sure. So I seasoned everything ahead of time. Then I put four of my chicken legs right on top of there. And then I put all of the same oils and seasonings on top of the chicken and then mix it all together. So you could probably do it all at once and just double everything. Uh, for what reason I did it this way, not exactly sure. And then you want to take your chicken and all of your vegetables and just pour that out onto a sheet pan. You can use parchment paper on the bottom or I have one of those silicone covers. I do have a cool fall one. Um, I have not been able to find that online to like link it for you. I got it at TJ Maxx last year, but I will make sure to link one of these silicone covers in my Amazon store in my description box. And then you just want to bake these at 425 degrees for about 40 minutes. You want to make sure the internal temperature of the chicken is at least 165 degrees and they're cooked all the way through. But as you can see, it is hot and delicious when it comes out. This cooks all those vegetables right in those juices and the flavor is just oh so fall and so amazing. It's incredible how inexpensive this is for how flavorful it is. And this is truly a delicious night of dinner. And now it's time to make a truly incredible chicken noodle soup. This is so hearty and so, so fall. You want to start with two ribs of celery, but you can really add as much as you like, especially since we already bought the celery. And then you want to dice up four large carrots. You really want to think about the size of the carrots that you want in this dish. Same thing with celery. So if the end of the carrot is really large, you may want to cut it in half because that's going to be like a bite-sized piece, right? You really don't necessarily need a super large round of carrot in your soup. Then you want to melt a tablespoon of butter in a stock pot over medium high heat and add in those vegetables. Saute these for about three minutes. And then while that's cooking, you just wanna take about three cups of chicken off the bones of the chicken legs and just dice those up. You want it to be, again, the bite-sized pieces that you would want for your soup. Into those vegetables, you wanna add your seasonings, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of black pepper, an eighth a teaspoon of dried rosemary, an eighth a teaspoon of dried sage, and a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes if you'd like to add a little spice. And at this point, I was saving my fresh onion for the chicken pot pie, so I used a teaspoon of onion powder. And then to that pot, you wanna add about 10 cups of that chicken broth. You need to bring that up to a boil. And then because I had it, I added a cube of chicken bouillon. If you don't have it, that's totally fine. They are super inexpensive, about a dollar for like eight or even cheap for a huge thing of it. And it gives so much flavor. And you just want to bring this up to a boil and then reduce your heat to low and cook for about 30 minutes. And then you can add in your chicken and we're just gonna let the hot soup kind of warm this chicken all the way through. And on the side, you wanna cook up your pasta. And because we're just using like regular pasta noodles, I really wanted to cook it on the side and then serve the soup over the pasta so that it didn't, um, I feel like pasta really takes on liquid and kind of gets huge and mushy and not good. So I like to serve the pasta separate and then pour the soup over and that way you can kind of um, make sure that that pasta stays fresh and that your soup, um, you have as much pasta as you like in your soup. This soup is so flavorful, so delicious. It makes a ton, at least two days worth for us. And it's just so soul warming really with all these meals. I mean, that's the thing about fall meals, but I love that we're doing this for so little money and still filling our bodies uh, with such good food. Next up, we're making butternut squash mac and cheese and chili. I like to eat this as one meal. And it's funny because I kind of like to like have a little bite of mac and cheese and a, have a little bite of chili, uh, but I don't want it like all mixed together. Like it's not a chili mac. I want it separate. So we're going to kind of make both these meals in tandem. I'm just going to microwave this butternut squash that I got as like a steam in the bag from Walmart according to package directions. Start boiling some water with salt for the other half of our elbow macaroni, and then grate down about half of my block of cheddar cheese. I could actually grate down the whole thing because this is all we're gonna use it for is the chili and the butternut squash. Uh, but I just need a couple of cups for our butternut squash uh, mac and cheese. And then you want about a, a cup of milk and that two cups of cheese and that whole package of butternut squash. I just poured mine into my Nutribullet, but you could also use a blender or even immersion blender if you 
put it in like a container and then push the immersion blender down. You do want to add some seasonings to this, about a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you just want to blend this up really well. It's going to make this amazing cheese sauce because that butternut squash is hot and it's actually going to melt the cheese and make a warm, cheesy, delicious sauce that I've never tried this method before. Uh, but when I did it, I was pleasantly surprised and it's so, so simple. So I just set that aside while the pasta finished cooking and I just started dicing about a half an onion. We're going to add that to our chili. And then you want to get oil or butter set in the bottom of a large pot, cook that over medium high heat, add in that onion as well as that one pound of taco turkey. You want to cook the turkey until it's fully browned. Then you can add in one drained can of kidney beans, one and a half cups of water, one can of stewed tomatoes, and one can of tomato sauce. And then to that for seasonings, we're going to add a tablespoon of chili powder and a half a tablespoon of garlic powder. And you want to bring this to a boil and then reduce your heat to low, cover, and let simmer for 15 minutes. And then while that was simmering, I finished up my butternut squash mac and cheese. Just want to drain out the pasta once it's all the way cooked, pour it into either a bowl or a casserole dish, and then you can just pour the melted cheese butternut squash mixture right on top mix it right in and that is all there is to it on that one super simple and so everything was kind of ready at the same time like i said i kind of like to have a little bit of this a little bit of that this makes a ton of food uh this was enough again for two days for my family and it is a fall tradition around here For this one, we're making chicken pot pie casserole. This is an amazing way to kind of stretch uh, chicken and vegetables and really make it into a couple larger meals. You wanna start with two tablespoons of butter in the bottom of your pan, melt that up. Then you wanna gonna add, gonna wanna add one medium onion chopped and cook that onion stirring frequently for about five minutes, you wanna cook it down. Then we're gonna add in that 12 ounce package of frozen mixed vegetables, and you don't even need to defrost those, just pop them right in there. And then you wanna add the rest of your chopped chicken, so really as much as you have. I probably had close to three cups, which is quite a bit to add to this recipe, but I don't mind if it's extra chicken in it because you really can't go wrong with that. And then you want one and three quarters a cup of that chicken broth, about a half a teaspoon of dried thyme and a teaspoon of seasoned salt. And then we're gonna make up a slurry with three quarters of a cup of milk and three tablespoons of cornstarch. This is kind of like a uh, cream of chicken alternative. You wanna heat the chicken and vegetables until boiling and then stir in that cornstarch slurry. And then you're gonna heat that again till just boiling and then pour that right into a nine by 13 casserole dish. This should be a nice thick mixture, you know, reminiscent of what you would see inside of a chicken pot pie. And then you wanna make the topping with just one egg, a half a cup of milk, and three quarters a cup of bisquick and two tablespoons of melted butter. So you just wanna mix all of that together and it's gonna make a, almost like a little, like a thin biscuit uh, type topping. And then you wanna just put that kind of in dollops over the top because it's kind of thin, so it's almost like cake mix. Uh, you wanna pour that right on top of the casserole. And then we're gonna bake this for about 30 minutes until that topping comes out clean. So like if you put a toothpick in it, you would wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way through. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but it is so fabulously delicious. And this is two full meals for my family. So it's lots and lots of food and we're using you know, majority of everything that we have up. And that's it for our challenge. That is the last of our meals and everything was amazing. I hope you love the recipes. If you wanna check out another extreme grocery budget challenge and keep this inspiration going, go ahead and click on this next video. Ha <laughs>